Welcome everyone to the Students Rebuild Water Challenge, The Beat Effect. I'm Abby from Global Nomads Group, connecting to you from New York City. I'm so excited to introduce all of you to our team in Tanzania um, at White Plains High School in New York and then Lawrence North in Indiana. I'm going to have the Coyote School and the students in Tanzania take it away. Thanks so much for joining. On behalf of Global Nomads Group, Concern Worldwide, Charity Water, and Bezos Family Foundation, we are thrilled to have a conversation with you live from Kotoke Village in Biharamulo, Tanzania. Biharamulo is in the corner of Tanzania, which is in East Africa. My name is Rachel with Global Nomads Group. Throughout the Students Rebuild Water Challenge, we have learned about the global water crisis, affecting hundreds of countries around the world. We have spoken to students in the big city of Dar es Salaam and the small village of Ngara and heard the impact lack of access to clean and safe water has on people, on their education, on their health, on their livelihoods, and their entire community. Today, we are here to celebrate with you at Katoki Primary School, where beads you made Um, with the Students Rebuild Water Challenge, have built water projects used by the 1,080 students at this school. My friend Gloria, next to me, is going to introduce us to people who represent this school and community and the other 80% of the Tanzanian population that live in rural and isolated areas that struggle to access clean and safe water, this most basic necessity and vital source. Thank you, Gloria. Thank you, Rachel. My name is Gloria. I'm a water and sanitation engineer. I work with Concern Worldwide at Ngara. I supervise the constructions, like the latrines and uh, 
rainwater harvesting tank and the water points that we'll be discussing on the topics hour onwards. Um, today we are joined by two schools who have just recently got the rainwater harvesting tank in their school as well as the toilets. Um, they'll be introducing themselves. Please introduce yourselves. Kevin. My name is Kevin Julius. Primary school, standard six. My name is Beta Siamatius. Primary school and standard six. Okay. Now we have also two students who are joining us from the nearby village. They have got a they got the rainwater harvesting tank last year and also the toilets constructed last year. So they have more experience than the other ones who have recently got their latrines this year. So please let them introduce themselves. My name is Krofas Kagoma, Standard 6, Primary School Cabin. My name is Tasiana Daniel, Standard 6, Cabin Primary School. Thank you, Tasiana. Um, we also have two members of WUG community. Um, they represent WUG water user group members. They are from the community and they are the leaders of the water user group. We have constructed the water points in their village and today they'll be speaking with us uh, about their experience in managing their water points. Please let them introduce themselves. My name is Saudax Miko. I'm 37 years old. Imani. I come from Lunasi. I am Walker Comte. Welcome to Lunasi. My name is Wilfried Ndila. I come from Lunasi village. I am work Comte member. Thank you, Winifrida. We also have two virtual schools. Um, we have White Plains High School. Please, White Plains High School, introduce yourselves. Okay. Hello, can you hear us? Hi, so we're from White Plains, New York, and we were part of the Water Challenge last year. We're from an organization called Global Ambassadors. So my name is Raina Cadaville. Um, I'm Nicholas. I'm Corinne. I'm Allison. I'm Jenny. I'm Nina. I'm Anthony. I'm Kira. I'm Ella. I'm Allie. I'm Isabel. Uh, I'm Catherine. I'm Elliot. And we are high school students from White Plains High School, where Global Ambassadors runs. And we're so excited to be here, so thank you for having us. Thank you very much, North Lawrence, uh, White Plains. Uh, please now, Lawrence, North, introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Garrett Sims, and I'm a freshman here at Lawrence North High School. And here are a few of my classmates who are joining with me here today. And we are very happy to have this opportunity to be here and listen with you guys today. Thank you. I'd like to I'd like to ask you at Lawrence North, do you know where you get your water? And have you ever had trouble accessing water during your life? Hello, um I'm Anthony and I think we get our water from watersheds and um it comes pretty automatically over here. I mean, walk up to a faucet and you turn the knob and out comes water. But um, that's basically how it is over here. Um, what I want to know is how you guys get your water and how long it's been since you guys have had to go collect water from rivers or streams or go far to collect your water. So thank you.
Thank you at Lawrence North. I just want to remind you in the US to talk slowly and clearly because I had trouble understanding you. I believe you said something about getting water from a pump, but I'm not sure. We're going to move to speak to the um, people here about how they get your, their water. But keep in mind while you're talking as to cross this very great distance through a generator and a satellite that we need to talk slowly and clearly. Thanks so much. And now we're going to turn it back to our WUG community members to hear how they get access to their water in this community, Kotoke. Um, we need Frida. Another to say, yeah, Nini mnapata wapi maji enu? Chanzo chenu cha maji. Sisi tunapata maji kutoka kwenye chanzo cha chabahindi. Unazi. Kisima? Kisima cha pampu. Okay, Winifrida specifies that they get uh, the water for drinking from the shallow well, which is protected, which is called Chabahindi. Thank you. Gloria is also our translator, translating in and out of the Tanzanian national language, Kiswahili. After those introductions, I'd like to ask all the virtual schools to also type in your questions. I already have one from Natalie in Mexico that we're going to get to in a second. But type in your questions, tell us your name and location, and we'll get to them fast. So today, we will talk to the people who have benefited from your hard work making over 60,000 beads through the Students Rebuild Water Challenge and to hear about the bead effect first hand. Before we get started, I would like to ask that question from Natalie. Okay, and I am getting questions sent to me via text message from New York. And Natalie from Guadalajara, Mexico wants to know, how much water do you drink a day? Hmm, maybe uh, Bertha? To me, Bertha, so I talk about Nat Natalia, anauliza, when you kiasi gani cha maji unakunywa kwa siku? Mi kwa siku unakunywa kiasi cha maji ambacho nilita jagi moja. Lenye lita ngapi? Moja au mbili? Lenye lita mbili. Um, Bertha here tells us that she drinks water every day at least uh, two liters per day. Okay. Now we are going to talk to the C2C group, which is joining us, which is called Child to Child Group. Uh, we'll start with the uh, recent C2C club. The representatives here will tell us what have they recently got and benefited from your bids in their school. Julius, Kevin. Nini mbejengiwa kitu gani sasa hivi shule ni kwenye? Sisi sasa hivi shule ni kwetu tumejengewa tanki kwa ajili ya kusaidia maji na choo kwa ajili ya kujisaidia. Um, Kevin here tells us that they have recently benefited by the construction of rainwater harvesting tank and luckily there was just rain some few minutes ago so the rain tank is now filling and also they benefited the construction of the toilets which consist of the 10 drop holes which is now going to be for sanitation. In a not engineer speak, 10 drop holes means 10 toilets. Thank you, Rachel. Um, I'll try to remember that. The toilets here, uh, for you, toilets means latrines when I speak latrine. Um, we have a second question, um, which goes to Betha. Uh, where do with, were they previously getting their clean and drinking water? Betha. Kabla hamja jengewa matenki, hapa shuleni, mlikuwa mnapata wapi maji ya kunyo? Maji ya kunyo tukwa tunapata bombani, ambalo bomba liko za anati. Na kuna umbali wa, wa kilometa, kuna umbali wa kilometa kuminatano. Na hivyo, tukwa tunapata maji kwa, kwa kutumia mwendo mkali. Daika kuminatano. Okay. Um, thank you a lot, Bertha. She has just told us that previously before the construction of this rainwater harvesting tank in their school, they had to go um, to the nearby tap, which is found 15 minutes walk from the school. 
That was a troublesome walk every day to get clean and safe water. So you mean that during the day they had to leave their studies to go get water so that they could drink during the day and it interrupted their time at school? Swali limeongezeka. Na kama ndio hivyo mlikuwa mnatoka saa za darasani kwenda kuchota maji kwa ajili ya kufanyia usafi na kwa ajili ya kunywa? Ndio. Yes, they were, they had to go out to fetch water during the time and during the day. Well, we have another question which will get adv advice from their old school. They have been trained, they've had their latrines for one year. So, they will be advising the new school on how to maintain their rainwater harvesting tank and their toilets. Um Cleophers, una um tumpate um Tasiana. Yeye ana ushauri gani kwa ajili ya shule nyingine hii mpya juu ya kutunza shoo chao na vitu ambavyo vimejengwa mwaka huu? Mimi na washauri hivi, hivyo vyo wavitunze, wavisafishe kila asubuhi na wanapotoka nyum, wanapotaka kutoka shuleni wa wanapotaka kutoka shuleni wahakikishwe wamefunga hiyo koki. Okay. Um Tasiana is just emphasizing that they should maintain their latrine clean, cleaning them at least once in a day and also when they before they go home they should wash them and lock them up so that they can be maintained. So I think in the US a lot of times at our school we have janitors or people that cl clean the bathrooms for us. Here the students are responsible for cleaning the, bath the bathrooms and they're proud as they're part of this child to child group. Yes, definitely here students are more responsible for their own latrines and maintaining. So they have to clean them and as well as installing the tippy tops so that others can use them. Thank you. And tippy tops, I have learned since my time in Tanzania, are sinks made out of water jugs and a pump you use with your foot. Um, it's not like the faucet we have at home. <laughs> definitely it is. Um, can, can we get another advice from the old school to the new school? Cleophas, unawashauri nini tena wakifanyo hao? Mi nawashauri kuwa kila asubuhi wao wanavifanyia usafi. Cleophas insists of the cleaning of the latrine every day at least once in a day in the morning before they start their classrooms. Thank you so much. I'd like to hear from White Plains High School. Do you have any question for our students based on their new access to water? Hi. So thank you for sharing your experiences with us. We were wondering um, what have you learned as students and as workers with WUG from your experiences from your experiences with getting water and um, using it. Can you unmute me? Raina, can you repeat that? Speak nice and slow. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we said thank you for sharing your experiences with us. It's incredible to hear about. And we were wondering, um, how has the res your receiving of water from this project um, watching the latrines and the water facilities grow and using them had it, and working with WUG had an impact on your lives. Thank you, Rina. I'm going to translate your question so that you can get the answer from the C2C group that we have as representative around here. Tumepata swali kutoka kwa mmoja wa watu ambaye ametengeneza bids nyingi kushinda watu shule ambayo imetengeneza bids nyingi kushinda shule zote Marekani na angependa kujua ninyi mmepata uzoefu gani kwenye kuwa kwenye kikundi cha mtoto kwa mtoto Mmefundishwa mmekuwa mkifanya nini 
kama kikundi cha mtoto kwa mtoto sisi tumepata uzoefu wa kwenye kundi cha mtoto kwa mtoto kutokana na kufundishwa na kupewa mazoezi Tumekuwa tukifundishwa maswali na vitu vingine mbalimbali. Okay, so Julius here tells us they've been trained in the different things of uh, cleaning and hygiene. And I can tell you from my experience that again they're really proud to be a part of the child to child group and the water user group. They have been nominated by their community to be in these groups and represent the water projects coming here. So thank you for that, Reina. Is there, um, I have another question coming in. Let's see here. Uh, Lawrence North, could you ask a question nice and slow? Thank you. Um, um, I would like to know now that you guys have um, clean and safe water. Clean and safe water. Um, do you guys have more energy, or is it easier to pay attention and learn now in school? Hey, over in Tanzania, I think you guys are muted. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, I'm going to translate that so that we can get the answer from the C2C club group members. Kwa njisi mlikuwa mepata tenki na mepata cho. Sasa hivi, mnaeza kuwa nafanya visuri zaidi darasani, mna concentrate zaidi. Dio. Right now they have more concentrations on the classes because they have the tree, uh, they have the rainwater harvesting tanks located to the premises of their schools. Thank you. So to our virtual audience again, I want to remind you to send in your questions. We can't wait to answer them. I'm going to turn to Gloria now. How do you figure out where you need to build wells, rainwater harvesting tanks, and toilets to reach the people who need it most? Thank you, Rachel. Um, when we intervene in a district, we have to collect data from the government. We get data from the government of which they'll specify on where is the greater need where we can go to implement. We also have our own investigation. We do the investigation in three districts and then determine the number of schools that have higher demand of the latrines and have very low access to their clean and safe water. That is where we can uh, assure that we can construct the latrines or the toilets and the rainwater harvesting tanks so that those kids can have access to clean and safe water. Thank you, Gloria. About the rainwater harvesting tanks, we have a question coming in from Mexico wondering, um, you know, today we did have rain and so those water tanks were filling up. What happens when it's not the rainy season? Well, thank you for the question. It's a great question. Um, right now, when it is rainy season, the water is filling to the rainwater harvesting tank, which is 50,000 liters. We train the school and the C2C club so that they can manage the water only for drinking and cleaning. These tanks are supposed to take them even to the drier times of their year. So even the dry season, they must have the, rain, the amount of water which can be used for their normal uses at the school. So, for example, at this school, there was a small tank that didn't uh, serve the 10,000, I mean, 1,000 students here. So the Students Rebuild Water Challenge added a new, much bigger tank that should contain all the rainwater that will be needed for drinking within the school for the entire year. 
despite the season that uh, is more dry. Definitely. Now we have the bigger tank, which can accommodate the rainy season to the dry season. They'll have drinking water and cleaning water at their premises. Well, um, we now have the two uh, water user group members. Now we have to ask them the, some questions so that they can give us their experience on managing the water points that are constructed in their premises in the communities. Audax. I'm going to ask Audax on why did he get involved to the water user group and how was he selected to be a water user group leader? Audax, ni jinsi gani wewe umekuwa umechaguliwa kuwa kiongozi na kwa nini umekuwa mmoja wa watumiaji maji kwenye kikundi cha? Ah mimi nilikuwa mtumiaji maji kwanza alafu kwa ajili ya uadilifu wa kazi nilioifanya huko awali ya kuwatumikia wananchi wakaniona ni bora kama mwenyekiti um asante sana audax audax re, uh, tells us that he is uh, he's one of the water user group members because he uses the water from the water point that was constructed to his community he also was selected to be a water user group leader because of his past experience in leadership and management sectors so he was seen fit to lead the water user group um i'm going to ask another question on who else is involved in this water user group winifreda ndio tusaidie ni kina nani ambao wanakuwa katika kikundi cha watumiaji maji wanaokuwa katika kikundi cha watumiaji maji ni watumiaji maji wenyewe ambao wanajumuika ni wanawake na wanaume ambao ndani yao kuna kikundi ambacho ni kamati ya ya watu wanane ambayo ina wanawake wanne na wanaume wanne Thank you very much Winifreda specifies that uh, the group is formed by all the people who are using water point and there is a water committee which is formed by eight people those eight people are their leaders of who they are formed by four women and four men and i would like to brag about audex and uh, winifreda they were selected out of 800 community members to serve in the wug and both of them as gloria said and they said before have had many um past experience as there are many different community groups that they are a part of. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Um, we're going to ask on how have they benefited in these constructions of water points in their communities. Um, Winifrida, lada utuambia ni jinsi gani ambavo mefaidika baada kujengewa iti chanzo kwenye maeno yenu ya na kwenye jami yenu? Baada ya kupata chanzo jamii kwa kweli imefaidika kwa kupata maji yaliyo karibu tofauti na mwanzo tulivyokuwa tunayafata umbali wa wa kilomita warau kama 15 hivi. Tumefaidika jamii imefaidika baada ya kupata maji yakawa kwa ukaribu. Kwani mwanzoni tulikuwa tunayapata kwa mbali. Winifreda tells us that Previously, they used to walk in a long distance to, for, to get clean and safe water. But right now, as the water point is installed in their community, then they don't have to walk that long distances. It's just 15 minutes walk. Then they get clean and safe water for their families. So it's still 15 minutes to walk to get water. It's much closer than it was before, but it's obviously not the best. We do have a great question here. I'm not sure if it's better for the students or for our WUG members. It's from the International High School of New Orleans. Hi, Ayuches Nola. Um, they want to know, if there is little access to safe water, does that impact the medical treatment that you receive? How can you get good medical treatment when you're not able to drink good water? Um, maybe I should help with that. Um, when you don't have enough water and access, then you will not have the 
you'll have a high uh, vulnerability to waterborne diseases. So definitely you'll have to go to the hospitals more often, miss the schools more often. So definitely you'll use more health services. Okay. So we continue with some questions for the water user group member available here. Um, we have to learn, we are going to learn what are the responsibilities of the water user group members and the, especially the committee members. What are their responsibilities? Audax. Ninini majukumu yenu kama kikundi cha watumiaji maji na kama viongozi. Ah majukumu yetu kama watumiaji maji na kama kikundi cha watumiaji maji ni kuhakikisha kuwa mradi wetu ambao tulipatiwa yani kile kisima cha pampa ambacho tume, tumepatiwa tunakisimamia vizuri kikiharibika tunafanya matengenezo maana tuna mchango wetu ambao tuna unakusanywa kutoka kwa wananchi na wanaokusanya huo mchango ni ile kamati ya watumiaji maji ya watu wanane thank you very much audax is just telling us that in the water user group as a committee members they have the responsibility of ensuring that um, the water point is functioning all the year round they collect money for when people are fetching water so that when the any spare part is required they can be able to purchase and fix it they have also a operation and maintenance personnel who is well trained to, op to open the pump fix the pump and also reinstall the pump so they have the assurance that they can manage and ensure water points are functioning all the year round. Um, Gloria is asking them if they can ask you in New York a question. Let's give this to White Plains High School. Okay. Okay, North Lawrence, we have a question from uh, White Plains. Thank you. Uh, we have a question from Cleophas. He's asking us, how do you maintain and clean your latrines? Okay. So, all right. So here in my plains, we generally here in well New York in general, we generally have in our school at least we have janitors and we have people like that who um, it's their job basically to clean our toilets, our latrines. Um, and I guess it's a lot easier over here than it is over there because of weather and how it's closed, more of an enclosed space here. So. Thank you for the answer. Wao wamesema kwamba shule kwao wao hawafanyi usafi wenyewe. Ila kuna watu wanafanya usafi kwenye vyo vyao na vile vile wao hawana shida ya maji kama ilivyo huko kwetu. Na swali lingine? Mimi ninapenda kuwauliza je, wenyewe wanapendelea michezo gani? Kevin here is asking um can this go to another school? Yeah. Which school is that? Lawrence. Lawrence North. Okay, Kevin here has a question for you. Which games and sport do you play mostly? Can you please repeat that question? Do you play? Okay, which play which games and sports do you play mostly? Okay. Um here at Ellen there are a lot a wide variety of sports that we can play, but a lot of sports that we like to do here are football and basketball and soccer and a whole like a whole variety of them. Thank you for the question.
Tanzania, you guys are muted. So we are going to learn from the C2C club members here. They are going to tell us which sports do they play to. Kevin, wana pendele mchezo gani? Mina penda mchezo ampira migu amboni football. Okay, Kevin tells us that he loves football. It means soccer for you, I bet. Mhm. Ma Betha? Mina pendele mchezo a lady. Ready. It's uh, three, uh, three people uh, with a uh, ball trying to get the one in the middle. In a pendele mchezo football. Cleophas also loves football. Mimi na pendele mchezo netball. Oh, Tessiana loves netball. So we have also several games here which are played by the, our C2C club group members. For our virtual audience, please do not forget to put your names and where you are watching. Also, we can, you can send us our, your questions and we can gladly answer them. Do they have questions for us? We'd love to hear any more questions. Let's get one more from uh, White Plains. And then maybe we'll get a question from the Water User Group to our students in the US. Thanks. Yeah. Hi, so I'm Allison from White Plains, and we wanted to know uh, what the students in Tanzania, what they want to do as a career when they grow up, or when they're older. Tanzania, I think you're muted again. Thank you. Okay, now Clovis, uh, tell us again. Mimi nataka kuwa doctor. Clovis would love to become a doctor when he, for his career. Mimi napendelea kuwa bibi afya. Um, Tanzania would love to become a health public health officer. Um, Betha would love to become a nurse. Mina penda kwa engineer. I have a fellow engineer around here. Okay. <laughs> okay. We are also going to learn about from the water user group members here, the leaders. Maybe they can tell us a little about how what do they do for their economy in their daily life. Um, how dax, nini unafanya kazi gani kila siku kwa ajili ya kuingizia kipato kwenye familia yako? Ah, mimi kazi ninayoifanya ni mkulima mdogo mdogo. Okay. How dax is telling us that he is a farmer. He he grows um he grows for his family so that and also for his economic purpose. Um we need food. Mimi nacho kifanya, kinacho ningizia kipato ni biashara ndogo ndogo. Okay, Winifrida is doing small businesses which uh, is the source of her economy and for her family. Thank you so much to all the questions coming in from our virtual audience. Um, we have a question here from 8th grade students from Smoky Mountains, North Carolina. They want to know, well, Gloria told us uh, earlier about how they got the funding, and that was through a certain criteria to determine the, um, the neediness of the population based on access to water and the toilets. But they also wanted to know, how did you feel when you learned that you were getting new latrines and toilets? Thank you, a grade of the students from the Smoky um, Smoky Mountains. Um, we are going to ask the students on how did they feel 
or while they knew that they were going to get the latrines and construction in their premises. Mepata soli lingine kutoka North Carolina. Mnaulizwa? Nye mlikuwa mnajisikiaji mlivambiwa kwa mba choki na jengwa pale kwa jilia ninye kutumia? Siuzi kwa jisikia vzuli sana. They were feeling very happy and excited to use it. Si tulijisikia amani kwa sababu wali tukunguzia msongamano wa wanafunzi kujisaidia vichakani. Well, this one, uh, Kevin was feeling peace because then after the construction they'll have no queues which they are using a, a less amount of drop holes. Right now they'll have no queues to use the drop holes. And queues for those, those of us in the U.S. are lines. Before, there were so few toilets that they had to wait a long time to access them. Now there'll be much less lines. Now, I am getting questions flooding in about how you can get involved, what you can do. I'm hearing from people in Tusla Middle School. I'm hearing from people, um, Natalie in Mexico, and Bryce from St. Thomas School in New York. Thanks so much for your questions and your concern. You know, the Students Rebuild Water Challenge is coming to a close, but that doesn't mean that the people in this community and others don't need your help. They are certainly still, um, as you heard, they still have to walk 15 minutes to get water. They're still vulnerable to drought. And there's so many other communities like this in Tanzania and around the world. So we do need to continue to reach out to these people. So I'd like to ask, um, at um, White Plains High School, you have had such a successful campaign making beads for the Students Rebuild Water Challenge. How do you suggest students continue keeping involved about such important international issues? What are you going to do? Thank you. So, hi, thank you for your question. Um, our ambassadors is that when projects like the Water Challenge, where something as simple as making beads are put out there, the want for wanting to get involved in making a difference just snowballs and everyone just gets involved. So I think the biggest thing that we can do is keep making it so easy for students, especially people like us, to get involved, to make a difference, and to definitely get awareness out there about things like water, which is exactly what this video conference is doing by giving us their perspectives. Because if we don't know what's going on, we can't make a difference. So things like this are fantastic. Thank you. And I'd love to go back. Thank you, Reina. And I'd love to go back to Lawrence North to ask you, why is it so important to be involved in these issues? You live in Indianapolis. What does it matter that there are people here that are having lack of access to water? Why do you care? Do you want to answer? Um, thank you for the question. We care because um, we like to know what's going on in the rest of the world. We like to be able to help other people because here in America we're very giving. We like to help other people more than we like to. We like to help ourselves as well, but we care about other people. We care about the rest of the world and we feel it's our duty to help other people. Thank you. Um, alikuwa maulisa ni kwa nini wao wanajali? Kwa sababu wanaishi sehemu ambayo ina maji, ina matenki, haitaji matenki na vyo, lakini wao wameangaika na kuwajengea kutengeneza zile bits ili kuweza kupata hela za kujenga tenki. Na Lawrence North pale walikuwa wamejibu ni kwamba wao pia wanatamani wajifunze hivi vitu vya kimataifa na vitu ambavyo vinaendelea kwa nchi nyingine si lazima tu kwa sababu bwana hapo basi kama wanaweza kufanya kitu wamefanya kama hivi tuofanya kujenga choo na tenki kwenye shuleni I am hearing from um, you know people to how you can continue to be involved so although the Students Rebuild Water Challenge is ending, there's lots of other ways to be involved in your community. You can check out the Charity Water website, also Concern Worldwide. They'll tell you ways to get involved in helping to solve the water crisis, as well as other very important global, um, global issues. 
I know Gloria here would tell us to become engineers or um, work in international development. As you know, that is very important because people like Gloria are the ones making these projects come to these communities. And we applaud her and all the engineers like her who do such amazing work. And any way that you can get involved in your community to really take action on an issue in your community or others. As teens, you need to be empowered. You need to save water in your community. Limit your electricity. Because remember, the water resource is one for the entire world. And we need to keep that um, safe for everyone. We have a few minutes left before our conclusion, and we'd love to hear from some more questions from the virtual audience. Please continue to ask them. And now, why don't we hear from the um, water user groups? Maybe Winifred has a question for some students in the United States. OK. Um, Winifred, you Uh, Mi nataka kuwauliza hao wanafunzi ambao tunaongea nao kwamba wao kwa nini asilimia kubwa ni maengineer. Um Adaxia is asking why, uh, why most of the people are engineers. <laughs> okay, do you have any qu uh, answer for that? Why are so many people engineers? In the in the in the schools. Okay, she's there next. So, Audex is wondering: Are people in your school? Do you want to be engineers, or what? Let's hear from Lawrence North High School. What do you want to be when you grow up? Let's hear from two students. Yes. Hi, my name is Alexis Johnson. I'm a senior in high school. Um, when I grow up, I would like to be a criminal lawyer. However, we do have different classes here for different things that people want to be. Like we have an engineering class for a study for people before they get to college to study it. Thank you. <laughs> All the best in being criminal lawyer. Um, it, um, hi, my name is Erin Valentine, and I am a sophomore at Lawrence North. And my dream job would be a music producer because I love music very much. But my original job or dream job was to be a mechanical engineer or electric. Uh, electric, uh, electric engineer. Um, so, thank you. So, we have a question from Tuslo Middle School, Tuslo Middle School in Ohio, about how many people have been impacted by these projects. And as we said, in the community, there have been 800 people impacted here at this school over 1,000 people, and because of your beads and the Students Rebuild Water Challenge, I want to get this right, you have created enough beads to implement 41 water projects. Those are rainwater harvesting tanks, latrines, pumps, impacting 16,000 16, people in Tanzania. So that's what your beads have done. So again, this is a celebration of what you have done for these, uh, for these people, and we are so, so grateful. I'd love to hear one final question from White Plains. Go ahead. Hi, my name's Elliot from White Plains High School, and I was one, um, I was wondering that now that um, uh, laboratories have been established, what would be the next step in improving the schools for the students?
Can you please repeat the question? Um, so now that laboratories and the schools have been established, what would be the next step in improving the school for the students? Now, um, as the rain, uh, rain water harvesting tanks has been constructed in the school, the next project is to train the school members, the classrooms, um, to be cleaned by the water is minimum so that the water can be sustained from the dry season and the rain water harvesting, uh, the rain time. They will also be trained about uh, hygiene and sanitation on how to use uh, the amount of water available with the soap, washing their hands so that they can reduce their possibility of getting any waterborne diseases. I think what Gloria just said is really important. The Students Rebuild Water Challenge and Concern Worldwide are not just coming in and putting these tanks and leaving. They're training the community members to be empowered to take care of these so that they're long-lasting projects. In each school where the rainwater harvesting tanks go, the students are trained, 20 students are trained uh, throughout the grades to teach not only about how to um, sustainably use the water, but also to help change behaviors towards hygiene and sanitation. And the same thing, the pumps in the communities, these water user groups are being trained to care for these pumps. If anything breaks, they are trained to fix it. They are trained to gather the money from the community in order to keep these pumps up to date. When I asked Audex yesterday how long the pump had been in use, he said it had been in use for only four years, but he hopes with his help it can be in use for another 100 years. So thanks for that question and the sustainability of these projects really lies in the people right here that we're talking to. Um, oh, actually, let me ask you a question first. And we have a question coming in from students in Purdue University in Indiana. I'm going to ask this to Gloria. How do you feel about the progress that has been made in terms of water quality and availability. I know you have been working in this field for about four years. And how do you see? Have you seen it improved? What do you want to happen to continue making a difference? Thank you for, thank you for the question. Um, for the four years that I've been working with Concern Worldwide, located um, in three districts, Ngara, Biramulo, and Kibondo, I've seen the progress, especially in schools, the primary schools that we work in, there's provision of clean and safe water. Um, we have uh, been monitoring the impact of the, which even the project, uh, the program didn't intend. The attendance has risen, the performance of students in schools have, uh, has increased because right now they have water in their premises, they don't get sick by waterborne, dis uh, waterborne diseases too, so they attend more to schools, they have higher concentrations, so there's more than one impact intended. Also, provision of latrines, they have changed their behaviors. In the, every club of C2C group that we form, there have also been the, imp the source of change for their communities and their families to construct latrines. So the use of latrine is not only being at school, but has also moved to their homes. Also, the use of TP taps, that is hand washing, the behaviors also changed. The students here are trained to train other students to wash their hands, to clean up after use of latrine. That also has gone to their homes and their families. So the communities have decreased their vulnerability to waterborne diseases in general. Thank you. What I didn't say before when we opened with that great dance number was that that was the other members of the Child to Child or C2C group here at the school. And part of the way that they educate the students is through song and dance. 
So it's a fun club for them to be a part of. And the messages that they're singing are really on how to, you know, why it's important to wash your hands, why it's important to clean the latrines and the toilets. Because that is not something, because, because of the lack of water, they didn't have the privilege to use water to wash their hands, and they weren't able to access water for a toilet. So it's not that they haven't wanted to do that, but they never had the opportunity before. So now that there is water available to them, it's how to use it to get the most out of it. So not only in the drinking water, but also in the health of hygiene and them, uh, in them and their communities. So it has been a great time talking with all of you today. We've had, um, we've had a wonderful time going through this. And we'd like to continue hearing from our virtual audience, and also continue, um, and also continue hearing from you around the world. I'm getting something from Emmy in California. Emmy wants to know from the students: What do you think? What do they think is the most important thing we can do to help them? So they want uh, Emmy in California is asking. What can people around the world do to help you? Um, okay. So we put a story to talk about California. Wow, I'm a Muliza. Ungependa wa wendele fanya nini ili kuweza kuwa saidia. Mhm. Una lejibu? Ah, Mimi. Ningependelea kwamba hawa wenzetu waendelee kutusaidia kutuongezea vyanzo vya maji kutuboreshea. Okay. Our docs request um, more water points to be constructed so that uh, few people can walk longer distances in time. Okay, Tasiana has a question for you. Mimi na swali ningependa kuwauliza wanapenda chakula gani? Oh. Okay. Tasiana asks a question um uh, can it go to White Plains? Mm -hmm. Uh White Plains. Which what is your favorite food? Carrot. Um pizza. <laughs> Ice cream. Pasta. Pasta. Ice cream. Pizza. Pizza. Ice cream. It's weird. <laughs> Pizza. Okay. Thank you. What about you? Okay. Well, I'm gonna pizza, ice cream, burger, pasta. Lada wame uliza sasa na nini mna penda vyakula gani? Wao na penda chakula gani tasiyan? Ndizi na nyama. Okay, tasiyan lives plantains plus meat. Bananas. Mhm. Mimi na penda ugali na daga. Okay. Um, our dogs loves stiff porridge plus fish. Mimi na penda ugali na mchicha. Um, Winifreda loves uh, stiff porridge plus spinach. I'll say that I had stiff porridge for the first time and it was quite good. Mimi na pendea pilau na maharage. Um Cleophas tells us that he loves pilau plus beans. Pilau is kind of like a rice pilau pilaf with lots of spices. Yeah. It's rice plus a lot of spices. Mhm. Mimi na pendea wali na nyama. Beth loves uh rice and meat. Mimi napenda wali na nyama au maharage. Um Kevin also loves rice, meat or plus beans. Okay. So on behalf of the Students Rebuild Water Challenge, Charity Water, Concern Worldwide, Bezos Family Foundation, and Global Nomads Group, as well as Kotoke Primary School, 
the C2C group, and the water user group in Katoke. It has been such a pleasure to join you. Remember, just because the water challenge is ending doesn't mean that we don't continue to need your help. Look on the studentsrebuild.org website to find out ways that you can get involved. Also, you can continue to follow the Students Rebuild Water Challenge blog. It's really cool. On the Students Rebuild website, they're going to show um, updates on the water projects made by your beads. When the projects continue to be complete, student re Students Rebuild is going to share the GPS coordinates so that you can continue to track you your projects that you funded at any time. Thank you so much to our amazing panelists, live and virtual. And I'd like to also encourage you to not only get involved in water issues, but other urgent issues around the world. Students Rebuild Next Challenge is based on literacy, which I know is also important to you in school in the US. It will help young people in Latin America, Africa, and Asia gain a better education and success in life. So go to studentsrebuild.org for more information. It's been a pleasure speaking to all of you. And we're going to say hello to our C2C group.
Cambira para cabe baba. Cambira para cabe mapere. Cambira para 